Gorgitas, it's Timmy Timmy. Joe making videos. Ba -dum -ba -dum we got a really weird knock to a cooler that I'd never seen before. And I wanted to, to look at it with you because it's a it's an interesting one. So uh, I got a little deal here on some parts. Uh, a 2600, so a Core i7 Sandy Bridge. Ooh, there we go. And uh, it got the uh, motherboard, which is this motherboard here, uh, P8P67 WS Revolution. It's a workstation motherboard from uh, Asus. And it seems to be a really, really, really good one. So there's the fan that this thing came with. And uh, what is this uh, Noctua cooler? The guy had everything in the box, 16 gigs of Mushkin RAM. Uh, this motherboard, the cooler, $220 Canadian. Pretty damn good uh, price. Normally people with all this stuff ask like well over $300 uh, around here for this kind of stuff. But the, the cooler is a discontinued uh, Noctua NHC12PSE14. So, I hadn't seen this one in a while, or no, I've never really played with this one at all. But uh, it's a lower profile. It's about with the um, fan on it, the height of a graphics card. And uh, you'd think it would have some RAM clearance issues, but I've got some really tall uh, RAM in here, as we'll see. This is uh, some 2666 RAM. Yeah, 2666 Extreme uh, Team Group stuff. It's really good stuff, and it's about the tallest RAM you'll ever see. And it fits in there, the 16 gigs of it does, uh, when the cooler is oriented the way it is, which I would think might have some problems with graphics card clearance, because this thing's got six big heat pipes on it, but it, as we'll see, and I take it off in a second here, when I put get some new thermal paste on it, uh, that it, uh, it clears everything just fine. So this is a really cool cooler. There's six big heat pipes on it. Uh, and it seems to cool really well. I've only tested it with its uh, original thermal paste here. We're gonna do some other uh, comparisons. We're gonna check this thing out. It's got some, yeah, someone put some good thermal paste on it at least some time ago. And then we're gonna test it versus a seven heat pipe NHU-12A. But I mean, it's substantially heavier. Well, let's get the, the fan involved. A lot more metal I think here, but check out this design. So you see here it has fins that lead to the cold plate. It does have six copper heat pipes. It does have a nice big, uh, you know, tower style cooler, but it's bent over. And then I would think you'd probably mount it like this most of the time, uh, which would lead to some, probably some RAM clearance issues once it's on there, I would think. Uh, but it does fit this way at least with this motherboard combo and stuff like that. So I'm gonna strap this buddy back on and uh, I'm going to overclock this thing as far as I can overclock it. And uh, I already ran some tests and at 4.5-ish gigahertz, it was like staying under 60 degrees. So uh, there's definitely some thermal uh, headroom here, but I like the idea of this extra little bit here. It's like, eh, there's, there's definitely some fin difference and stuff. So we'll check this out. I thought this was a cool cooler, cool cooler away. So as we can see behind me or on the screen right here, <laughs> I've been running this for 18 minutes now. Finally got it dialed in. It took me a good hour to get this thing dialed in, mostly because Sandy Bridge era, Ivy Bridge, they're um, pretty good for booting at ridiculously high vo um, voltages and frequencies, like five gigahertz, 1.45 volts. And you're like, if I keep giving her volts, maybe it'll survive a Cinebench test. Five gigahertz, it would not do it, uh, no matter how hard I tried, at least not with this cooler. And the cooler is doing a pretty good job, uh, but 4.9 even wasn't, didn't seem right. So uh, even though the, the temperatures weren't out of control, they were like under 90 degrees, uh, I just couldn't get it to do it. And I don't want to blow the top off of this thing. You know, I think it's had a pretty easy life. But uh, as we see here, we've been running for 18 minutes at 4.9 gigahertz, 4, oh, sorry, 4.8 gigahertz at 1.4 volts. At 1.38 volts, maybe it's it's pretty high there. I'll put the 
stuff up on screen here. And uh, we reached a maximum on the package of 81 degrees, uh, according to um, Ida64. Like, yeah, one core, the core four got to 81 degrees. But, I mean, we're still running the test. I mean, it's, it's still running. And temperatures are well under control. We're, we're between 70 and 80 degrees here. So it's not bad. This thing's working very, very, very well. Uh, and then everything's temperature controlled in here. So when we do test the difference in CPUs, I, I run an air conditioner at 70 degrees, which I don't know what that is in Celsius. What's 70 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? 70 degrees Fahrenheit is equivalent to 21.111 degrees. So it's always 21 degrees in here, um, ish, uh, with the air conditioner running. I shut it off while I'm filming, obviously. So, uh, 4.8 gigahertz, can we go any higher with this guy? Uh, but as we can see here, 82 degrees, can we beat 82 degrees max temperature? And can we get better than 4.8 gigahertz? I guess I'll have to tell. been a minute uh, and uh, it's almost been 30 minutes running this thing it is uh, much much better in fact it's it's more like 74 degrees max temperature with an average between 68 and 72 uh, when the uh, what is it NHC 12 PSE 14 here was about five uh, degrees on average worse, but the max temperature reached about eight degrees worse. Um, the only reason why that one says 75 there is I had the air conditioner off for a while because I filmed a couple other takes, but I wanted to do something because this new design is obviously much better because it's the best design Nocta has come out with uh, before. NHU-12A is a very, 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 very good cooler. At a smaller footprint, it tends to match the NH uh, D, uh, the uh, D15. NH D, NH D15. There we go. NH. God, you guys need to get better. Like. I have to refer to this card every time I want to remember what the name of this NHCP12PSE14 and then uh, my brain goes dead. So uh, I wanted to do some tests. We're going to see if we can overclock a little further with this guy. If, uh, But it, being within like 8 degrees max temperature, considering it's missing a heat pipe, it has a little bit, well, quite a bit less fins. Uh, I like that this is attached here and it's got to provide some helpful cooling there. I like this design, but ultimately, what is this design going to be better for? Well, the fan is pointing down and why have I not been testing VRM temperatures? Well, I have, uh, well, at least I started. Uh, unfortunately, the motherboard doesn't have a sensor for it. That's why I was just kind of not worried about it. Also, the VRM on this thing is like way overkill for a quad core CPU. It does not get very hot uh, with these nice big heat sinks and a copper heat pipe on there. Uh, but uh, I'm going to put this cooler back on. And now that I have some results for basically it's only getting a little bit of sideways air blowing through the cooler like this uh when you have this design how much better is it for vrm cooling is it uh is that gonna be like a deciding factor trying to track one of these down or you know maybe not to bring in it back or you going with the update to this the one with four heat pipes that's really meant for more um, you know, close quarter situations, low profile situations. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can overclock this a little further. I have some overclocking profiles. I already, you know, tried with this one, so it shouldn't take too, too long. And then I'm going to put this guy back on for a conclusion and we'll see as VRM temperature is really that much better with a downward facing fan. Pro probably. All right, already with this cooler, um, we're doing pretty pretty decent because we're five degrees off the max temperature of uh, C this the C twelve P. We'll just call it that for God's sakes. Uh, and we're a hundred megahertz faster, uh, and we're stable at this uh, frequency. So maybe five gigahertz. You bleeding kidding me? We're at seventy three degrees on the package running Cinebench at 5 gigahertz. That's awesome. I don't think that this is something I would run 24 seven. 806, that's almost the best score I've got. Let's see, will it run again? 873. 
and it ran it no problem jeez it really does it the nhu12a is a absolutely amazing cooler absolutely it still isn't hitting the 82 degrees that the 200 megahertz less uh was doing with this cooler so oh 79 i'll let it run for as long as it'll like i can't believe it's, it's stable at five gigahertz oh! <laughs> clock watchdog timeout it almost did five gigahertz for like five minutes a little more voltage or a little bit more cooling headroom and we might have a five gigahertz chip here 360 milli io or something like that Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy back on because I wanted to test VRMs and I didn't do that the first. Yeah, I gotta go back in a 4.8 gigahertz too. All right, so we know that the NHU12A is definitely a better cooler. Um, in fact, I will measure their weights and put them on the screen right here. That probably accounts for a lot of it. They're definitely, this was definitely, uh, you know, got some more material to it, a lot more dense fins. Uh, and of course, it's got the better fan. So before we get to, I'm gonna put this fan on here, even though it's a little bit smaller, to see if that does change things, uh, you know, in, for the better. Um, but uh, VRM temperatures are definitely much better with the NH12C12P. Uh, by about five degrees, the way I can uh, judge at 4.8 gigahertz, um, pointing this at the bottom of the VRM, uh, finding the hottest spot, which is right underneath a thermal pad, uh, kind of in the middle up here. And I was getting about 50 degrees, 49 degrees with this cooler with the same frequency and the same voltage and everything, same overclocking profile. Uh, and we're getting about 40 degrees, 42, it's, it's, it's a significant uh, jump down, about eight degrees. So this thing can get about eight degrees better max temperature, but this thing gets about eight degrees better VRM temperature. So there definitely is a case to be made for this cooler type and uh, the fact that it's just kind of gone by the wayside, I don't know. So last thing we're gonna do is I'll put this fan on there and we'll see if that decreases temperatures, you know, exponentially or, you know, if it's going to do very little. I have a feeling it'll do something, but it's not going to make up the difference between the two coolers. The fan is only part of the equation, but we'll see. That's a that's a pretty old knock to a fan. Things have definitely changed in 10 years. Okay, we're done. Um, that fan does not equal better cooling on this specific, uh, you know, because the, there's so much more air being pushed from this fan. Uh, the, if they made a bigger, a 140 millimeter version of this fan, I'm sure it would do better. There's also uh, literally a man drilling into aluminum and uh, concrete over there. So, And I'm just tired to trying to wait for him to stop. So we're gonna finish the video here. In conclusion, uh, I was hoping a little better results from this. I was actually hoping that maybe it would sort of match, you know, the kind of cooling potential that this thing has. That doesn't make sense. They would keep this in, this design in the loop if it was that good. Uh, you know, it's kind of about eight degrees off max temperature, but it did do eight degrees better VRM cooling from my testing. So there's an argument to be made for this uh, cooler style on lower end motherboards that don't quite have the VRM cooling because uh, there's not a lot of thought put into VRM cooling these days as far as you know coolers go. Most of them are towers like this and in the mid range, that's gonna make it so, you know, yeah, there's airflow being pushed through this and it is exhausting air from around the CPU, but when you've got direct, you know, fan blowing through a heat sink, blowing air, out and around your VRM, it is going to equal better VRM temperatures. So to me, it looks it looks like a pretty damn good design that maybe you shouldn't have discontinued. And you know, especially for lower end, uh, you know, motherboards with bad VRM cooling, this would be a go-to product. And yeah, you can buy an Octua that is 
like this, but it's not meant for cooling the RMs as much as it is meant for going into a lower profile case. I, I guess there is a case to be made for that as well, because uh, you know it's as high as a graphics card, really, with a, with a fan on there. So that's, that's pretty cool. So I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram Twitter. I hope you uh, enjoyed just like experimenting with something different today. And uh, I don't know. I hope you you learned something. Uh, but I think these cooler designs should make a comeback in the big format like this. I throw some RGB on that, and we can have like a woo woo kind of dance party while we're cooling our VRMs and everyone would be so much happier in the world. <laughs> I'll, I'll see you guys later. That noise is driving me bananas.